Hello, everyone. My guest today is Robert Frederick. He's the founder and CEO of a company called Circle and has been focused on connected communities of devices, people, and businesses back since 1993. He was inspired by the balanced future potential of smart connected devices and leveraged this passion to attend MIT to work on projects in the MIT Media Lab and to join one of the first startups focused on standards that would be later called Bluetooth in the late 90s. The startup's licensed product, devicetalk.com, was a central server running intelligent agents that used event-based logic to complete actions on behalf of its users via simple commands and conditional triggers. All right, Robert, are you ready to take us to the top? Oh, yeah, sure. Good. All right, tell us tell us about, so obviously, impressive background. Tell us about your current venture. What is Circle and how do you make money? Oh, well, uh, Circle is a middleware uh, solution. It's a platform, uh, a SaaS platform, if you know what that means. Um, and we uh, license our technology. We license uh, templates that leverage that technology uh, across uh, multiple verticals, uh, automotive, uh, smart buildings, uh, retail, uh, healthcare, and uh, uh, of course, developer services like SDKs and APIs so that others can actually benefit and uh, generate their own uh, uh, solutions on top. And your pure play SaaS, or is there a pay as you go a professional can service uh, service component? Actually, we we're one of the few that has uh, our uh, license pay as you go, um, uh, as well as we have hardware components that people purchase and license uh, and or lease from us uh, over the course of multiple years. So okay. uh, we we tend to be in multiple sort of areas, not just a single you know, uh, particular Robert, one. if you were to break down the, the revenue streams is, is caught north of 80% coming from SaaS, or is it more diverse than that? It's more split up uh, more. So, uh, when it comes to revenue, it's a combination of, uh, SaaS as well as hardware. Um, yeah. So what's the, the split? I'm curious what the split is. Oh, it's, it's probably around 70, 30. Okay. Um, when it comes to software, uh, to 30% hardware, um, if that makes sense, it does make sense. There's a lot of companies, you know, Eero, which is kind of, you know, a Wi-Fi inside the house. Uh, there's a lot of companies, you know, Purple Wi-Fi, which there's a hardware component yep. they have to sell, and it locks in the subscription fee. Are you seeing the same economics? In other words, the hardware is really an important piece for retention. Well, it's it's kind of different. Um, can I uh, sort of explain a little bit about what the hardware does? Yeah, and of course. How it ties back. So uh, we actually have patented hardware uh, with multiple radios inside of it. And those radios, when you place uh, the devices in uh, in a, the right configuration around uh, a room or a space, hallways, whatever, a stadium, <laughs> a hotel, a casino, a hospital, you name it, a retail store, it can actually determine down to, I call it, show, or we call it shoulder to shoulder accuracy of where everyone in that particular building is located or where the devices are in that building. And then we historically can show and in real time where someone's going, where someone's dwelling. Let's say like the they're staying at the in a line at the grocery store. So go open up another point of sale um, there. I call it the uh, I guess you could call it a big box retailer problem where, you know, someone's roving roaming around the store looking for staff. Well, our system uh, notifies staff in real time where to go. Got it. And oh. are, I'm looking at your website as we're chatting here. You've you've taken this technology, and it sounds like you have many different use cases. One of them is you know call it a casino in, in Vegas, right? And and or maybe watching flows inside a grocery store, or, or even cars and smart mapping, right? How, how do you how do you how do you pick a focus, or can you do all these things at once with the technology? And is that the right business strategy? So one of the things that you kind of missed, or uh, on the background, which is kind of fun. Uh, is I actually was at MIT. Mm-hmm. I did have a startup. That startup was acquired by Amazon. Um, DeviceTalk.com uh, uh, became uh, Amazon Anywhere. Amazon Anywhere had a mission, and that mission's focus, or the focus of that mission was make it possible for any th- anyone, anywhere, at any time, on any device to be able to access information uh, from Amazon services. That turned into uh, multiple different groups, but the one that I'm responsible for and the one where you can you know, look me up and what I'm uh, known for is uh, Amazon Web Services. So uh, talk about a SaaS uh, solution and coming up with the strategy for 
uh, one of the most successful SaaS uh, offerings uh, out there. Um, I was on the original team. I'm taking that same concepts, those same uh, capabilities, and um, we're getting developers to adopt uh, customers, startups, Fortune 500s, Fortune 100s to adopt our technology across many different verticals, just like uh, we had adoption within the first few years of AWS. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. But I would argue also, I mean, did AWS have a hardware component that made up 30% of the revenue? No, they did not. Yes, but, I mean, uh, you certainly learned a lot doing that. It's a very successful yeah. SaaS company. But I mean, what you're doing now, you're leveraging totally new tech that you you, you know, maybe from MIT, right? I mean, so, yeah. so look, I mean, the, there, the, are, there are the Kindles and there are the uh, Echoes and there are the Fire TVs and uh, and you are talking to someone who anticipated that actually happening. Uh, so in our, in our as an argument uh, and in defense, yeah, it, it basically. Yeah, Robert. Sorry, I'm not. I, I'm not trying to disqualify <laughs> everything you've done. What I'm trying to do is focus on the last ten minutes, kind of where I drilled yeah, deep sure. on, right? And I want to focus on circle. So, so for someone listening right now, I look. I think I get it because I've read their website and my research team put it together. But for someone listening right now, when they think about what Circle does, how should they think about how it impacts them when they're in the sands in Vegas? Sure, no problem. So what we would be able to do is give, uh, using a little bit of AI, a little bit of machine learning, uh, the devices are uh, basically our toe in the door. They're the ones that are sending the data into the uh, the back end of the, of the system, of the services. Is that We're, opt-in from the consumer or you do that automatically? We, we do that without even having uh, a, a need to opt-in. It's sort of like uh, it's radio. radio surveillance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, I, that's why our system is unique. Um, because Don't we're me here on the tech, but it's like it's radio waves or something like that, right? Yes, okay. exactly. It's radio waves are leaking from your device in your pocket, and we're able to detect that. We don't know that it's you. Yep. But we know that there's someone standing there. Does that make sense? Yeah, or the phone's like resting on a table at the blackjack table. It could be the uh, the earbuds that are in your ear. It doesn't have to be the phone. Got right? it. So the idea or a badge or um, your, uh, your key card, whatever it is that's leaky. And then we fingerprint that device and then we use that information in real time uh, to create triggers and notifications to staff, uh, to build reports, to uh, generate uh, data that would allow our customers to enhance and create these really engaging experiences. Does that so make sense? It does, Robert. Let me pull that forward one degree, and then I want to move back to more of your story here. So sure. if you capture my leaky iPhone when I'm sitting at the blackjack table at the Sands, and you know that you've been capturing that leaky signal for over two and a half hours, you know I'm potentially pretty addicted to that blackjack table and that you should have the waitress come give me another rum and Coke because I'm going to be there. They'll keep me there another two and a half hours. Is that kind that of? Perfect. Okay, good. Am I hired? Perfect. I'm hired? <laughs> you are. You're You're more technical than you think. All that right. Was, All right, so good. On a, on, a, on a business point of view, um, now apply that to a stadium. Now apply that to a hospital. You know, like someone hasn't moved for a period of time. Um, and you actually need to trigger someone to go check on them. Yep. Uh, apply that to, you know, all of these different use cases and, uh, to go back to the circle side, you know, by being able to have the back end capability, um, to do this, uh, analysis, to do these predictions, to create these customizations and these really engaging experiences, then the different devices that are being built both by our company and other companies can be installed into a vehicle. They could be installed into a home. They could be installed into a condo or into a stadium, an arena, or a, a, a big box retailer. Does that make sense? It does. Let me shift. I think we now have a great idea, example of kind of what the tech does. Let's shift real quick to kind of the business history. So starting sure. first, I, I believe you're very much in the enterprise space, but I want to confirm that. What's the average customer paying you per month? I'm, I'm guessing it's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. Yeah, uh, it depends on uh, the average customer it can be anywhere from tens of thousands a month to we've had uh, hundreds of thousands as well. Okay, and w why would someone pay twenty grand versus a hundred grand? It's like number of captured leaky devices per month, or what's the metric? 
It's the usage of the servers, the number of service, servers that are needed in order to license. And I do want to basically say uh, th there is a difference. We are unique, uh, one more time, because we do both cloud as well as on-premise um, service capabilities. So you don't have to go out to the cloud um, if you have your own hardware on-premise. HIPAA, security reasons, all kinds of stuff. Exactly. Yeah, and that's your hardware on-prem solution. And that's our differentiator. Great. Okay. Fair to say, though, you just give us a big range. Fair to say, minimum, though, it's 20 grand a month. And then yeah, everything else is north of that. It's tens of thousands. Yeah. yeah. It's tens of thousands. Okay. And then when did you launch this company? Uh, 2013. Okay. Uh, after um, doing a lot of research and uh, bootstrapping my uh, the previous company for four years. Which one was it? Was that Device Talk? Uh, that was, uh, it was called Gripwire uh, before this. And then we, pour, we basically raised money in 2013. Okay, and, for uh, the new the new idea. Yeah, exactly. Did you shut down the old company, or it's the same? Yeah, it's it's pretty much every all the employees, everyone moved over into the new entity. Clean cap table. Clean cap table. Okay, good. So so shut it, kind of boot. Very shut important. Up. Very important. Uh, to that's have why. A clean cap table. That's why I asked. Did you have investors <laughs> in that first one or no? No. Okay, good. That so you bootstrap. Yeah. Roll it in. Clean cap table. Uh, yeah. Have you, you you raised in 2013? How much have you raised to date? Uh, nine million uh, at a uh, twenty pre, so about thirty million dollars uh, is the valuation of the company. When today. was the nine round? Uh, nine uh, closed in two thousand sixteen. Yep, got it. Sorry, that was a twenty one pre. Yeah, tw yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, interesting. I thought you said you also raised in twenty thirteen. No, I uh, yes. Uh, so basically, it was a convertible notes, and the convertible notes turned into the Series A round. Yep, if that makes sense. It does. It does. So yeah, they we, converted. Cool. So, so nine on 21 and, and, uh, that was in 2016. You did that. So right now you're either selling to Amazon again, or you're raising capital. <laughs> Which one is it? We're, uh, we are both a, well, I have to be careful on that. So, uh, we are a very attractive company <laughs> to, to put it that way. It's yeah, since you're a good looking <laughs> guy, right? That's how it works. <laughs> Well, all I have to do is smile just like you do, right? <laughs> uh, the the, fun, <laughs> the the fun part is we have a op, uh, existing customers. They're really large, and we're trying to uh, be profitable uh, without having to raise a lot of uh, capital and when, give away. What month, what month do you think you'll be profitable this year? Uh, uh, ask me again. Uh, What's your goal? On another call. <laughs> We are aiming for this year. Yes. Okay, you're aiming for this year. Got it. Okay, then you just talked about more about customers. How many customers are you serving now today? Oh, um, are, we're, uh, I think, just coming to large customers. Um, just total, customers. total customers. Yeah, anyone paying? Uh, 15. 15. Uh, major, major customers. And like I said, uh, tens of thousands a month. Yep. Uh, upwards to hundreds of thousands. So uh, that's about as much as we can basically cover yeah. uh, with our current size. Well, I mean, I can and, say, I can say too, I mean, you gave me that 20,000 a month minimum earlier times 15. It's fair to say you're north of 300 grand a month right now. Not, I can't say that. Uh, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> well, you, well hold on, but hold on. You already said both 15 customers and 20 grand minimum. So one, well, one of those numbers wrong. So there you go. So you basically got it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, and that's a minimum, by the way, well, you could be doing way I more. Wanna make, I want to make sure when I, and th those are paying customers, but we also have a whole entire development site uh, 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 portal, and people are jumping onto that portal. They're using our technologies. They're proving out our capabilities. And then that's how we basically convert them into paying customers. That's the AWS play, right? Get that adoption. You got it. Yeah. What's the team size today? Uh, we're just about 20 people. And where's everybody based? In Seattle. Everyone. Yeah. Uh, well, not everyone. We have... Uh, when it comes to sales and some contractors, we have um, we have Boston and Atlanta uh, and uh, New York. Okay, good. And growth rate? What do you have? if you're doing? Call it 300 today. What were you doing a year ago? Um, let's just say that uh, the growth rate moving forward, uh, just on one deal, could be uh, multiples. Just on one deal out of so our 16th deal, if you want to put it that way, would be much larger than what we've actually earned. Uh, over the last uh, year. Yeah, yeah, Robert, anyone going in the enterprise space will say that though, because that's what growth looks like when you're in the enterprise space. I mean, are you generally right now growing 20% year over year, 100% year over year, 200? Yeah, we're, we're basically around 25 to 30% year over year. Year over year. Okay, healthy. And you think obviously that can be accelerated with some of these larger deals now? 
yeah, just one deal alone. Um, yeah. 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 So good. I mean, look, if you're 25% year over year, you're 300. Now you could argue it's called 220, 250, something like that about a year ago. So good. I look healthy growth as you're figuring out the market. Um, churn has anyone left? <laughs> Uh, we have, we've had both, uh, people, uh, join as well as, uh, uh, leave. Uh, we do have churn. Um, what and is it? Part, um, and part of it is, uh, just tied to, um, startup versus enterprise. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people have come from enterprise space. Startups are tough, you know, um, so and Robert, we, what, what is, what is churn today annually? Uh, let's say if we were around 20, so uh, I would say we typically have two or three people, uh, year over year, basically joining in and leaving. Uh, so it's basically even, yeah, um, yeah. Net zero, but gross, you might churn two zero. out of 15. So call it maybe churning 25%, but again, net zero. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yep. Logo churn annually. Good. And then what about things like CAC? I mean, do, do, you know, what are you paying to acquire these customers? Oh, um, so that's, that's a, that's also a very tough question to answer, but, um, I'd have to put you in touch with our, our, uh, VP on that, uh, for biz dev, but ultimately speaking, it's, it's typically a, um, two, two to three month sort of, uh, uh, turnaround from a uh, first contact to, um, either knowing that they're a paying customer because they're doing a pilot sure. um, to um, basically putting them in uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, the, uh, into the pile <laughs> of people who uh, will approach a little bit later. Does that make sense? Yeah, Qualifying so, our, so our, do you, our... I mean, do you have a good idea, though, of fully, what fully weighted CAC is? Are you willing to spend 10 grand to get a $1,000 a month customer Oh yeah, like we we would basically spend that just on a conference if that makes sense. And typically, we get a lot of interest from uh, uh, from conferences and uh, from exposing our capabilities. Yeah, let me ask them. this. Let me ask this differently. What do you what do you like to keep payback period under? If someone starts paying you today, you like to make up your CAC in how many months? Uh, within uh, three to four months. Okay, got it. So three to four months minimum is twenty grand a month. That's what you sell. So you could argue CAC could be as high as sixty grand or you know sixty eighty grand something like that. Yeah. yeah, it all depends on what it is yeah. that we're selling, right? It makes good sense. If it's sense. just hardware, that's one thing. If it's um, um, if it's uh, services like for a large retail chain, take for instance, it could be a little bit longer. Yep. Very good. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. One word answers here. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Wow. Uh, <laughs> who moved my cheese? <laughs> okay. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, I, I always study Jeff Bezos. Um, so yeah. Number three, like what's your favorite online tool for building the business? Believe it or not, Uber conference. That's a good one. Uh, number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, four to six. And what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? Married with kids. How many? Uh, two. Two. Okay. And how old are you? Uh, 46, 46. Last question, Robert, what do you wish your 20 year old self knew? How to raise money at 20, um, as opposed to, and what stock options actually meant. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. He was on the team that built AWS, now taking that same concept and really building, uh, how do I best describe this? He's giving, find the utility value to the internet of things in terms of what a waitress at a casino could do uh, when they realize what a cell phone signal has been in the same spot for four hours and how they drive business results from that. Or same, same thing in a hospital where they might have an on-prem solution installed for HIPAA and other privacy regulations and make making sure patients get checked up on uh, hot, hot space, interesting technology, 9 million raised doing right now about, uh, again, 300,000 bucks in monthly revenue. That's up from call it 250 about a year ago, 15 paying customers uh, looking to potentially raise here uh, later this year, but only after they get to a point where they're profitable so that Robert has all the leverage. Robert, thank you for taking us to the top. You are welcome. Only one change and that is Instead of Internet of Things, we like to say the intelligence of things, which is the next, the next, next. Guys, um, there you have it. He's branding it here on the show, Intelligence <laughs> of Things. The book comes out late 2019. Robert, thank you for taking us to the top. All right. Thank you.